Late summer 1066, England, this country there in the North Sea, was attacked, invaded by a Viking force, some say of up to 300 long ships. But the Vikings themselves reckoned it was 200 fighting ships, the other 100 were supply ships, that kind of thing. They're very clever with these ships because they were so shallow drafted they could go into rivers and even take their sails down, collapse their mast and row slowly along the rivers, which they did in Yorkshire along the River Ouse. They were going for the town in the north, York, but there was a Saxon army waiting for them. On the 20th of September, the two armies will clash, but the Saxons made a stand. They st stood on the hill and waited for the Vikings. The Vikings, led by their king, Harald Hardrada, they also had the brother of the king of the Saxon, Tostig, he was there too. Anyway, the Saxons made the most enormous mistake. They were on top of the hill, yeah, for sure, but they had no line of retreat. If they were outflanked, enemy comes round the side, they had nowhere to run. And the Vikings knew this, and they outflanked them. They came around the side, charged up the hill, pushed the Saxons off the hill, and they retreated into the marsh and the swamp where they lie to this day. In fact, it's on the site, I believe, of York University. But you'd have to check that out because that's a bit of a modern thing. Anyway, the Viking army now, prisoners, threats, they want the north of England. That's what they're after. But what they don't realize is Harold Godwinson, king of the Saxons, he's actually on his way up from the south. He has a full army. The Vikings don't know. On the 25th of September, near a place called Stamford Bridge, the Vikings are caught unaware. They don't have their shields. They don't have their armour. It's all back on the ships. Oh, they have their weapons, of course. But the Saxons were fully armoured, and they were ready. Did you know a lone rider rode out from the Saxons to this Viking army? And it was a surprise because he said, Tostig, come back to us Saxons. We will reinstate you, give you your earldom of the north. And Tostig said, if you will give me that, what will you give now? Harald Hardrada, king of the Vikings, what will you give him? And they said, seven feet of land, enough to bury him. He then turned his horse and rode away. Harald Hardrada asked Tostig, who's that? He holds himself so well for such a small man. He said, that is my brother, Harold Godwinson, who, by the way, was over six foot tall. Harald Hardrada was a giant of a man. The battle is going to begin. It's going to be a hard fight. But straight away, it goes wrong for the Vikings. Because they were ill-prepared, because they didn't have enough shields, bowmen, all of these different things. They were going to have a real, real hard fight. So their plan was to retreat. The problem was the river was behind them and there was just a small wooden bridge, quite wide, but small enough. So they are going to have a problem. And even before they can begin, a bowman shoots one arrow and hits the Viking king straight through the throat. The Vikings try and retreat over the bridge, but the Saxon army advances on them. Now this shows you the courage of the Viking warrior. One man, one man holds off the Vikings. He uses his axe and he stands at the foot of the bridge and he kills, so they say, up to 40 Saxons. The Saxons just can't get at him. There are too many men crowding in front of him. And he fights hard. What courage! And the Saxons are looking. They're even shooting arrows, but he seems to dodge them. But then two ordinary Saxon warriors come up with an idea. They'd seen a barrel floating in the river. So... One gets in the barrel, and he has a short spear. And the other pushes the barrel along the river. 
and underneath the Viking warrior, so brave, so firm, they look up in between the planks and they do a thing which in Old Saxon is called brogging and they literally thrust the spear straight up in between the legs of the Viking and they thrust it hard into his guts. Can you imagine the look on his face? Oh, I don't feel very well. He collapses. Now the Saxons charge over the bridge. But waiting for them now is the Viking army with their swords, with their axes. But it's going to be a fight that's uneven because the Saxons have their mail, they have their helmets, they have everything they need to fight. But the Vikings, being so brave, make a stand. Meanwhile, Viking warriors have been sent on horseback all the way to their Viking ships because there are still many warriors on board their ships. They need their armour, they need their extra weapons, they need their shields. Well, the second phase of the battle was hard fought. What shields they had, they locked. But the Saxons were too many for them. And slowly but surely, they began to break and run. As soon as they broke and run back towards their ships, the Saxons can pursue them and hack them down. This was a bloody battle. And believe it or not, this battle would actually change the face of Western Europe, possibly the world. The Vikings, as they run, meet their warriors coming from the ships. Hastily, they form shield walls, but the Saxons are too many, and they kill so many Vikings. At the end of the battle, so many Vikings have been killed that it took only 24 ships to sail back to Norway. Some people say it was the end of the Viking Empire. But the Vikings did invade again and again. But the sad thing is, about a third of the Saxon army had been killed at Stamford Bridge. And about a third of it wounded. When news arrives that the Normans had invaded southern England, the Normans under their King William were actually descended from the Vikings. The Saxon king now has to ride fast down to the south, gathering an army as he goes. But he had to leave behind his bowmen. They were too slow. What happens now in October is the Battle of Hastings. And the Saxons lose. And the Normans take over England and join with their Viking cousins in the north. You see, I know about this because I am actually English. And I know the history all too well. But I am not an Englishman as you would think. Because I am descended from the Vikings. Thank you very much for your time.